Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Colorado Avalanche franchise mode. So in last episode we had the season simulation and we finished with a record of 49, 26, and 6. And we've been kind of killing it as of recently as you can see in our last 10 we're 7, 1, and 1. And we're going up against the Phoenix Coyotes in round number 1. One problem we do have though uh, facing them is we're out. Um, we have a major injury to our captain Joe Sackick. So Sakic is out, I think it was till like game 6 or something, if it goes that far. Or he might be out longer, I don't even know. And then Arizona or Phoenix, whoever you want to call them, they're out with a, another major injury, which I'll show you guys. It's to Nikolai Heavy Bulin, so they're without their number one goaltender, so that's going to be a bit of a problem for them, because they're going to have to rely on Bill Ranford and then if Ranford doesn't play good then the 68 overall goaltender is not that good so yeah that's a big injury for them to have but he will be back I think it was for game six if uh, it goes that far or well actually maybe it might be game seven I don't even remember because it's been like a couple weeks since I've or at least like a week since I've played this so anyways let's get into the series See if we could get a win here on home ice. We need to win both these home games, hopefully. Because I don't want to lose any of these games on home ice because it kind of would defeat the purpose. Like, So, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Because I literally just woke up. So, anyways, first period of game number one, and it is scoreless. Shots are 11 apiece, and nobody has scored yet. So, the goaltender is doing good. So, surprisingly, we did not score on Bill Rainford yet. Second period, still scoreless. Wow, this might be a bit closer of a series than I thought. Hopefully, we could still get to Bill Rainford and oh my God, Robert Lang makes it one nothing and Kovalenko makes it two nothing. Looks like we might lose game one and get shut out by Bill Rainford. That would just be not a good way to start off. I guess he might be that good still, even though I think he should be close to retirement. And yeah, it's 2 nothing final for Phoenix. So we do not score a single goal on Bill Ranford and we lose our first game on home ice. So yeah, that is not good. We might have to make line changes if we lose next game. Like Patrick Wall had a good game and the defense played pretty good most of the time. But just it came down to the last period and our offense did not show up. Like it could be just because we were without Sakic. But who knows. Okay, guys, let's rebound from this in game number two. Let's see if we could tie the series up because we don't want to really go down 2 nothing going into Phoenix because they might play better on home ice. Who knows? First period, and it's one nothing Phoenix. God damn it. Robert Reichel opens the scoring, and we're getting heavily outshot 13-5. to So we need to kind of pick it up a bit more here in the second. I don't know why our offense is just not getting shots and stuff like that so second period and there you go we finally beat bill rainford and it's theo flurry good job theo shots are 22 to 20 so now they're a lot closer let's see if we can take the lead here in the third come on boys do it for joe joe will come back soon enough and then hopefully he'll help us out final 10 minutes of the third period they're getting a lot more shots this period. I think we've only had like a couple shots. Penalty kill. That's a huge penalty kill. Yes, good job. And we're going to OT. Shots are 36 to 25 in favor of Phoenix, but it is still a 1-1 game. So Patrick Wad doing all he can to keep us in this one. Come on, boys. Let's get that winner. We've struggled for offense of, as of these first two games. So I want to see somebody come through here. Like, where are you, Forsberg? You, you're, you're normally really good, so. Come on, boys. Somebody score for us, please. Well, we're going to probably be going to double OT, it looks like. And, yes, we are going to double overtime. 47 shots on Patrick Waugh. He's made 46 saves. He's still trying to keep us in this. Hopefully, we can get a winning goal here. Let's go. Double OT. Come on, boys. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Oh, this is taking longer than I thought. And there you go. Enters the game winner, and it's Sean Donovan. Okay. So leave it to the fourth liner, I think, or third liner. 
and we have tied the series. That's a big goal from Sean Donovan. So Theo Fleury from Forsberg and Ozilinch and then Donovan from Mike Watts. So thank you, Sean Donovan. 50 saves for Patrick Waugh. Thank you as well. Bill Ranford was the second star and Donovan the third star. I'm glad I kept Sean Donovan around because he's a pretty solid bottom six kind of guy. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that there's like some sort of franchise mode like bug I've been having. And uh, basically what happens is when you're in the playoffs, eventually you can't like do an intervene, like you can't intervene and do the simulation thing or you can't even watch the game. So I don't know if, if, if we ever experienced that in this franchise mode, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Like I might have to uh, do multiple takes or we might have to just do calendar simming, which would be really stupid. But hopefully we never get that glitch. Anyways, we're in Phoenix now, first period of game number three, and they are up 1-0, Keith the Chuck. We don't want to let him to get going, because their top line's usually really good, so we need to get a lot more shots again, guys. We're being outshot 12-6, second period, and there you go, we tied it up, Chris Drury. Good job, Drury. Against his uh, future teammate, technically, in uh, Daniel Briere, because Daniel Briere is... Um, Phoenix shots are still heavily in Phoenix's favor 25 to 12 come on boys I guess we're getting the Bill Ranford at least but our offense is struggling and Dallas Drake makes it 2 to 1 for Phoenix come on boys let's tie it right back up last 10 minutes of this third period we need a goal come on boys there you go Steve Sullivan that's what I'm talking about that's why I brought you back man 2-2 two, two game, and oh my god, you gotta be joking me, Wendell Clark, with 30 seconds left, gives Phoenix the win, and we lose game 3. Damn, I thought that was gonna go to overtime. So Drury from Watt and Donovan, so that line's playing pretty good, and Sullivan from Drury. Damn, stupid Wendell Clark. No offense to all you Lee fans out there, because... Wendell Clark's the Leafs legend, so Drury gets first star still, Ranford the second star, and Clark the third. Okay, so I might make some line changes because our offense has just kind of been struggling. We've got four goals in three games, so a little over a goal a game, which, yeah, that doesn't cut it, especially when it's Bill Ranford. Like, the top line hasn't been doing really anything. Like, I'm surprised Forsberg hasn't done anything. Let's put Forsberg actually at center instead of Poulin. Because, uh, yeah, that way we have better depth at center. And, yeah, let's put Hayduk up. Let's actually just put Pullen all the way down to the third line for now. Even though he does technically play where Saki is, so he is going to be on the power play and whatnot. Okay, I think that's good. Hopefully Forsberg and Hayduk could get some chemistry going. Because if Joe Saki retires in a couple of years, we need some guys to like be able to play good together. And speaking of Joe, he is back in the lineup. He is back from his injury. So that is huge for us. Hopefully he could come here and like help us tie the series. He gets on the next flight to Phoenix to get into this game. So Sakic at center, Forsberg back to there. That should be a big boost to us, getting our captain back. But once they get uh, Heavy Balloon back, that's not going to be a good thing. So we want to make sure we could get some wins here. So here we go. Game number four. We need to tie the series here. Hopefully Joe Sackett could come through with some points. He's usually that bread. Uh, yeah, the bread to the butter of that first line. So first line. Or not first line, but that first period. Oh my god. Yeah, it's early in the morning. I am so tired. Sean Donovan made it one, or not Sean Donovan, what the heck, Shane Doe made it one nothing, but Sylvain Lefebvre tied it up for us, good job Sylvain, shots are 13 to 10, so we're getting more shots with Sakic, so that's good, second period, and 4 to 3 us, good job boys, so they were up 3 to 1 at one point, Hogan Kovalenko, but Fleury, Ozilinch, and Drury score, and we have the lead going into the third, can we just lock this down please boys, we're letting in a lot of goals, but at least we're scoring a lot more of this game. It must be just having Joe Sackick back in the lineup, and Hogue ties it up at four. Come on, Wall. You could do this. 
Patty Wall. Come on. Final five minutes of this third period. And oh my god, Patrick, come on. Oh my god, are we tied up right back up though? Patrick Wallet in a goal with a minute four. I thought that was the winner from Randy McKay. But with a minute 13 left, so literally 20 seconds or so afterwards, Vili Pelton and ties it up and we are going to OT. It's a 5-5 game and we're being outshot 39-29. to Come on guys, let's get a hero here in OT. That would be huge to tie it up late and then win it. And we're not going to win it. Andre Kovalenko makes it a 6-5 game. And we're down 3-1 to in the series. Damn. We let in a lot of goals that game. But our good goals, at least our top line. Yeah, Sakic had two assists in that game. So Sakic definitely helped out. Did his contribution. Yet our team still fell. So I might make some line changes because we are on the brink of elimination. And look at that. Sakic already actually had three assists in that game. So he's leading our team in points. After the game, he comes back, so. Let's see, I might make some major line changes to try and figure out why this team is not performing the way they are, or they should at least. Um, How has Hayduk been? Probably pretty bad. One assist only. Drury's been good. You know what, let's put Sullivan out center. Put Drury up to the top line, move down Flurry, even though Flurry's got two goals. So we're breaking up our top line. And then how's the bottom six been? Not uh eh, there's been not too bad, but not too good either. Hmm. I don't know what to do with that. Maybe I'll move actually yell back down and put Bullis up. Because I think Bullis is more offensively minded. Then we'll put Aaron Miller to the top here and move foot down to the top four. And goalies are going to keep the same. Because I'm not going to Mike Dunham. Even though Patrick Waz had a high goals against average, I'm not going to. And yeah, I'm not going to put in any depth, guys. So yeah, hopefully that helps us win three straight games. Or else we're going to be a first round exit again. Which means we're still technically falling backwards. Considering a lot of our guys are getting older. This might be one of the last seasons we get a chance to do this. So. Game number six, is it? Yeah, game number six, I think. Or five, one of the two. First period, we're on the brink of elimination, and we don't score in the first period. We're out shooting them, which is good. 11 to 9, and we're on home ice, so hopefully we can do this for our fans. Come on, guys, let's come through here in a second and give us a win in the series, at least. Second period, and still scoreless. Shots are 21 to 18. So this is back to a tight game like it was in game number one. Come on, guys. Let's have a third period hero here. There you go, Forsberg. That's what I'm talking about. We need to win three straight, though, so it's going to be a difficult road to climb. Come on, boys. Oh, my God. Dallas streak ties to that one. That's not good. Shots are really tight as well. Final five minutes of this third period. Come on, boys. And there you go, we get a late goal of our own, and we win as Stefan Yell, with 54 seconds left, gets the goal to go ahead. Sean Donovan gets the empty netter, and then Wendell Clark would have tied it up if Donovan didn't get that empty netter. So, thank you, Sean Donovan, for that empty netter. And we have forced another game, so Forsberg from foot, Yell from Watt, and Donovan, and Donovan from Watt. So, yeah, Donovan and Watt seem to be playing pretty good together. Patrick Wall gets first star, so thank you, Patty Wall, again. Hopefully, we can play good in Phoenix, because this is the game I think actually Heavy Bullen might be back for. And we don't want him to close out the series. He's really good. Like, he's a Vesna winning goaltender in this, I think. Let me check if he actually is back in the lineup for this game. Because now we're going to have to somehow beat him instead of Bill Ranford. Uh, let's see, is he back in the lineup for game six? Yes, he is. Yeah, this is going to be difficult. Hopefully we could somehow like re-injure his leg or whatever it was that was injured. And then send him back out. Because, damn, like we need to win these two games, both against Heavy Bull. And so it's going to be a battle of the goaltenders for sure in this. So here we go. Can we tie the series and force a game seven on home ice? 
That would be huge. First period, and it's one nothing us. So we managed to beat Heavy Bull in the first period, and it's Theo Flurry. Shots are 15 to 13 in favor of Phoenix. Second period, and still one nothing us. Good job, boys. We're keeping them off the score sheet so far. See, like Heavy Bull's been playing good. He's made 24 saves already, but we at least have that one goal. Third period underway. Come on, boys. Let's get another goal. Power play chance, and we don't score. And they tied up. Wendell Clark's been really good in the series. Penalty kill. Nicely done. We need to get a goal, guys. Power play. No, we don't score on it. Final five minutes of this third period. There's been a lot of late goals in this series so far. And we are going to overtime in game number six. Shots are close. 38-36 to in favor of the Coyotes. We need somebody to step up here. Joe Sackick. Please be you or Forsberg or anybody really on our team and force a game seven. That would be huge. Huge boost for confidence. If we lose this game, that would not be good because we're kind of falling backwards in time, I think. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Both teams are still kind of close in shots. Final little bit of this first overtime period, and we're going to double overtime. We're being outshot 49 to 41. Uh, who wants to be our hero? Who do I want to call upon? Um, Sandus Olzlinch, maybe? I don't know. Um, or Sean Donovan again, because we went to a double overtime before, right? So here we go. Double OT underway. Come on, boys. We need a goal. And we're not going to get it done as Andre Kovalenko ends us in the first round. God damn it. This team is falling so much farther behind than I expected. Like, I don't know what the problem is. Like, maybe it's just because teams are signing free agents or something, but... Or making trades, but, like, clearly we've just not been able to get, like, farther than the first year. Like, first year we went to the conference finals, second year we went to the second round, and then the last two years we've gone to the first round. Nikola Heavy Bullen is the reason they won that game. Damn... That really blows that we're out already. AHL's not even in the playoffs because they finished probably with a really horrible record. So, let's sim all the way up to... Actually, let's take a look at the player stats first. Why not? For the playoffs, see who did what. So, yeah, I think it's just because their top line was not producing the way they normally do like during the regular season. Because Donovan, Forsberg... Well, actually, Forsberg had four points, but we're still all under point per game. Anybody really badly minus? Yeah, the second line, or third line, might not have been that good because Deadmarsh was a minus three. I might think about letting him go this offseason. And Wall was really good, but still adding 16 goals in those six games. So, anyways, let's sim to uh, the draft now. We'll see the retirements and all that stuff. Hopefully, we have some actual retirements like from created guys like hopefully Gretzky decides to finally hang them up he's like 39 by now if Tampa Bay somehow wins the Stanley Cup that'd be kind of crazy because they um they've gone through a tough time and New Jersey's gonna win the cup okay I'll take that because that's a team that actually should win a cup around this time so New Jersey wins the Stanley Cup in the Grand Rapids Griffins wins the AHL so let's take a look at the individual player awards. I'm pretty sure Peter Forsberg has the Art Ross this year. Why is this not stopping? Come on, you stupid simulation. It's not even stopping. Pittsburgh, Vancouver, and Boston have the first three picks in the draft. So Pittsburgh's getting a pick, which makes sense because they're kind of in rebuild state. So let's take a look at those awards before we get to retirements. So the Stanley Cup champions for year number four are the New Jersey Devils. So pretty accurate simulation in terms of uh, who wins the Stanley Cup in these years. Like the Flyers was the only odd one out, but Detroit and New Jersey both winning cups. The Islanders won the President's Trophy. That's kind of weird because obviously they were rebuilding in year number one. And then the Stanley Cup finals would become uh, between Edmonton and New Jersey. So... Edmonton getting to the Stanley Cup Finals is a bit earlier than they normally did because if this was the 2000, yeah, I think it's the 2001 season or the 2001-02 season, they wouldn't have got to the Cup Finals till 05-06, so that's an interesting Stanley Cup Finals. Player stats, or player awards, 
Art Ross goes to Peter Forsberg for the second time in the last three seasons. The Hart also goes to Peter Forsberg for the second time. The Norris Trophy goes to Zidane Chair with the New York Islanders. He had like 24 goals, I think, this season for some reason, so I don't know how he's simulating that good. I think it could be a slap shot or something. Eric Deze takes home the Lady Bing with the St. Louis Blues. Frank Walzer, who was that franchise guy that went a couple years ago, um, he gets the Calder for the season. Peter Sikora takes home the Conn Smythe. That's interesting. Broder didn't take it. Patrick Waugh takes home the Vesna. So we had the best goaltender, but we just could not live up to expectations in the playoffs. Good job, Patty Waugh. Uh, Defoe gets the Jennings. Defoe and Chegmanic. That's actually a pretty good goalie combination that the Islanders have. Andreas Lilia takes home the Masterton. Craig Conroy takes home the Selkie. Forsberg takes home the Lindsay. And Paul Carrillo will take home the Maurice Richard. Anybody in the AHL that's of worth note, hit Dave Andrzejczyk's in there. That's interesting. Anybody for us? Um, No, that's not us, I don't think. Colorado. Oh, no, there's no words for us. <clears throat> okay. So now the final thing to do is retirements. And then I'll show you guys the draft class. And then I... Th think I'll also look at the progress reports and then I'll be it for this episode. So let's take a look at the retirements. And we're going to sort by games played again. Uh, let's go games played. Okay, so out of... Wait, what the heck? Oh, that's probably why. I was wondering why Alex Formenton retired already, but it's because I put him as a free agent and stuff like that, and I got rid of his potential completely, so that's why those guys are retiring like Eli Tolvanen. Because if they have, like, AHL extra forward, they retire, like, really young. Which is good, because then you won't see them later on in the series. So that's a tip if you guys are making any rosters. Um, let's see... There's got to be somebody down here. There you go. Murray Baron retires with 67 games played, 2 goals, 7 assists, 9 points. So he didn't actually get to play that much in the NHL. He was also in the AHL for one season. More of a depth guy, it looks like. Played 11 playoff games one time and got an assist. Um, Who else? Gord Murphy. Yeah, he was also in the AHL for quite a few years I think 80 games played 5 goals 16 assists for 21 points he retires with the Ottawa Senators yeah he was in the AHL for the last three years so he only played year number one playoff stats he only played six playoff games in year number one hmm. um Ken Baumgartner he was also in the AHL I think 82 games played two goals three assists for five points this guy was more of a physical player as you can see with his penalty minutes, he was in the AHL for the last three seasons. And yeah, he only played playoff games in the AHL. Um, Peter A. Holder also retired. 82 games played, 2 goals, 1 assist, 3 points. So not a lot of points for Peter A. Hola. Kind of a guy I didn't necessarily need to make. Only 3 points in those first season. And then he played in the AHL, which he played decently. And he only played in the playoffs in the AHL just the last season. <laughs> Nico Hiche retiring. That's funny seeing that already. Um, who else? Mike Stapleton. 91 games played, 19 goals, 26 assists for 45 points. I think Germany signed him in the offseason. Yeah, he played eight more games with a goal. But the last two seasons before that, he was in the AHL. And in playoffs, he only played in the AHL, so he never got a taste of playoff action in the NHL. Who else do we got here? Oh, Don Sweeney. Don Sweeney hangs them up with 121 games played, 6 goals, 13 assists for 19 points. Did he play in the playoffs recently at all or no? Because I'm keeping track of playoff stats kind of as well. He did not get to play a single playoff game. That's kind of surprising. Anybody else? J.J. Deneau, 164 games played, 7 goals, 10 assists for 17 points. Wow, he dropped off a lot. And he was in the NHL last season. Interesting, and he never played a playoff game. Was he just a free agent then this year? He might have been just a free agent because he doesn't look like he was even in the AHL. 
Um, anybody else? Paul Coffey re retires with the Ottawa Senators. I think he was in the AHL the final season. 167 games played, 23 goals, 28 assists for 51 points. Yeah, he was in the AHL the last season, but he was really good in year number one. And then he played in the AHL playoffs just last season as well, playing pretty decently. So there you go, Paul Coffey, a legend retiring. Mark Bureau, 175 games played, 19 goals, 39 assists for 58 points. He was more of a fourth liner, I believe, but he won the cup with New Jersey, it looks like, last season. No, he was in the AHL, but it's still his NHL team won the cup. So that's good for him, I guess. I don't know if he got considered with that cup win. I think he won in Philadelphia anyways. Mike Eagles retires with 178 games played, 31 goals, 27 assists for 58 points. Kind of a bit better than normal life because he was more of a grinder. And he was also in the AHL the last season. So it seems like a lot of these guys were AHLers their final season. Chris King also retires with 178 games played, 9 goals, 14 assists for 23 uh, points. And he also had a lot of penalty minutes, and he was in the HL the final season. Anybody else? Sergei Nimchinov retires with 181 games played, 26 goals, 32 assists for 58 points. Yeah, he actually played in the NHL the last season, so that's interesting. And he was in the playoffs the last season as well, 9 points in 13 games. Eddie Olchuk hangs them up at 35 years old, 206 games played, 30 goals, 48 assists for 78 points. So let's take a look at his playoff stats if he played. He actually played a bit in the NHL last season. And yeah, he was just a depth guy, it looks like, at his later stage. Mark Pedersen retires at 35, 215 games played, 25 goals, 36 assists for 61 points. I'm sorry that I'm going through all this, it's just because I need to keep track of playoff stats and stuff too. So there you go, Mark Pedersen. Paul Ranheim retires at 37, 58 points in 219 games with the Edmonton Oilers and Carolina Hurricanes. I don't know if anybody else, he played in the AHL the final season. Um, Mikhail Anderson retires at 36, 73 points in 226 games, and he was also in the AHL the final season. Damn, there's actually quite a few guys. James Patrick retires with 49 points in 233 games at 39 years of age. He also was in the AHL. I think in real life he retired at like 42 or 43 if I'm not mistaken. Corey Millen retires at 38 with 81 points in 239 games, so another retirement for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he actually played a bit in the last season. Uh, Steve Duchesne retiring at 36, so that's a pretty good defenseman, 79 points in 243 games, and he didn't actually play at all last season, huh, so yeah, he might have been a depth guy and just never got the play. But he at least got one Stanley Cup with the Flyers. Uh, Kevin Miller retires with 51 points in 246 games. So that's one of the Miller brothers. He was also in the AHL the final season. Thomas Sandstrom hangs up with 106 points in 246 games. So he was actually pretty good. Because he started off with the Mighty Ducks in this. And he played pretty good in the AHL in the final season. Um, Joey Koser retires with 42 points in 246 games, so he was more of a physical guy as well, I think. Yeah, definitely more of a physical guy. He actually got to play in the NHL in the final season after playing in the AHL in the first year. So there you go. I think he might have won the cup with Detroit. Uh, Greg Adams retires with 169 points in 246 games, so we're getting a lot of retirements here. Adams was also in the AHL the final season, but he was really good when he was in the NHL, if not mistaken. Bill Berg retires with 48 points in 246 games. Looks like he was a free agent for the final season. Yep. Uh, who else? Ulf Samuelson, 36 points, 249 games. Pretty good defenseman. He actually got to play the last season, too. So there you go, Ulf Samuelson. Stéphane Richet, 90 points in 250 games. 
so he actually also got to play a bit in the NHL in the final season, so that's good for him. Chris Chelios retires way earlier than he did in real life, but obviously this makes sense for him to retire around now. 41 years of age, 57 points in 252 games, won a Stanley Cup with Detroit in this. So there you go. Holy crap, there's a lot of them. Yeah, I'm sorry if this episode's going to run long just because of the amount of retirements, but there is like a lot of them. Dave Manson, he also got to play the final season. Bobby Dulles, 30 points, 265 games. He also got to play the final season. Bob Rouse retires. How much games played? 292. Damn. Yeah, there's probably still a lot more to go through. But I have to go through it like this because or else you guys are not going to, or else I'm not going to be able to get the stats, you know. Pat Verbeek retires with Detroit, which he actually played with Detroit around this time, I think. 130 points. Pretty good, but also physical nonetheless. So there you go, Pat Verbeek. Um, anybody else? Scott Stevens hangs them up. Okay, so he actually retires like a year or two ahead of his time. 87 points in 313 games. Also a decent amount of penalty minutes. Probably a lot of hits as well. He retires with the Stanley Cup at least. So who's going to be the new captain in New Jersey, I guess? Uh, Todd Gill, 51 points, 323 games played. So there you go, Todd Gill. Jeff Bookaboom. Yeah, there's so much retirements. This might be one of the biggest retirement classes I've seen from our creative guys. So there you go. And there you go. Jeff Cortnell, so the other Cortnell brother retires. I think it's at 112 points. Pretty good for him. Kelly Miller retires, so two of the Miller brothers retire the same season. So that's kind of cool. I wonder if Kip's going to retire as well. Uh, Phil Housley retires with 173 points. So, yeah, he was a very good offensive defenseman. Could have, I think he won a Norris, actually, at one point. Like, maybe last season. I could be wrong with that, though. Uh, John Shabbat, 164 points, so he actually played a lot better than I expected, especially considering he was with the Germans, I think, the entire time. Uh, Scott Melby, 112 points in 330 games, so he kind of retires a bit early, but retires with the Stanley Cup. Uh, Jamie McBain, no thanks. Anybody else? Nope, that is it for those offense retirements. How about goaltenders? So, games played, let's just go by. Um, Anybody in this build? So, Bob Asenza, 55 games played, 23-20-3. Wow, he actually had a 935 save percentage and a 1.99 goals against. So, he played a lot better than I expected him to. And he was in the AHL the final season. Um, Also, Glenn Healy retires, not the greatest record but a good save percentage and goals against i think he was also in the ahl the final season yeah he was and i think that's it oh wait yeah that is it so that is all the retirements for the season so we still have to show you guys the draft class and the progress reports i'm sorry that took so long i didn't realize there was gonna be that many guys like wayne gretzky still has not retired which is pretty crazy so let's go to the draft class. So we're probably drafting like 20 something, but let's see. So if we're drafting like 20 something, I don't even know exactly what we're drafting. There's definitely some forwards. There's also this Olaus guy who could be medium elite, but I don't know if he actually is, and he might go a bit ahead of where we are. But if you see anything that we should go after, let me know, guys. Because next episode is not pre recorded, more than likely. And then progress reports. Let's see, did we get anybody drop off a lot to grow? So Mark Darmore, oh yeah, our prospect, I remember that, that we drafted last year. He's up to an 81 overall, 19 years of age. I think there was another defenseman I was actually looking at in this draft, so I might go after that guy for sure. So yeah, Mark Darmore is going to be in the NHL next year. Anybody drop off a lot? Nope. Um, 
Other prospects, let's see, Culp is up to a 74, so that's good. So he might be a fourth liner soon. And Zadorov's a 71. Anybody else? Not really. How about goalies? Oh yeah, our franchise goalie prospects up to a 63 already, so that's actually really nice. He might be a 70 by 20 years old, so. And he had a pretty solid season in the WHL. So, anyways, I'm going to end this episode here just because, like, it's probably run long just because of all those retirements. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Too bad we did not get past those Phoenix Coyotes. Hopefully, we could do better in next episode. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.